Um, Tara? Um, thanks, Akir. I mean, just to reply to, to, to Senator Sapone's um, wish that we would delete, and I can honestly say to you, Senator, I, I wish we could. And I wish we weren't dealing with the education system that we're dealing with. In fact, I wish we weren't dealing with the constitution that we're dealing with. I wish we weren't dealing with the uh, with the, the reality we find ourselves in. We have an education system. I mean, I met many of the groups that are here um, in the gallery today yesterday. I made the point that we are dealing with an education system that perpetuates inequality by its very by 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 its very constitution. That's that, that's what it does. We have abdicated our responsibility when it comes to education for the entire history of the state. We have outsourced it. We have said that we will have a state-funded education system, but not a, a state education system. And we establish a school, and we ask people to send out the tender. And we ask um, we ask uh, bodies to come in and uh, and uh, patient bodies to, to oversee the runnings of those schools. Um, I don't like that, but that's the reality under which we have uh, to operate. So whatever we Whatever manner or, or means we, we employ to, uh, to regulate that situation, it's never going to be perfect, and it's never going to be, unfortunately, as equal as we would like it. I have a lot of deputations come to me in relation to, to equality in the education system. Why do I have to baptise my child to send it to a local school? Why does it make any logical sense for anybody to, to think it makes sense to have... I mean, I am deeply uncomfortable with the idea in any given geographical area of having... Uh, a number of different denominatory schools that children go into different uh, uh, church or, or school gates and separate. We separate children on the basis of gender and separate children on the basis of religion. And we constantly do this. And also we have, because our system is based fundamentally on, on, on the idea of, of competition, which it seems to be, that inevitably some children who are more disadvantaged will lose out and those children who are more advantaged will, will gain. And I completely agree with where you're coming from, because it's not necessarily just, and I know we're focusing on the employees here, and the workers here today in this, in this, in this amendment, to this piece of legislation. But what is the, the child of an LGBT couple to feel? Or the child of a divorcee to feel? Or the child of a, of a single parent or parents to feel um, in, this, in this scenario either? I mean, I'm very, very keenly aware of that. Very, very keenly, keenly aware of that. But what do you do when you're uh, charged with the responsibility of, um, of legislating within the constitutional confines which you find yourself? That's, that, that's, the, that's the reality of where, where I am and where government is and where every go any government would be. Um, I would love to delete it, but what would happen is, I can predict, is that we would be on the losing side of a court case, high court, Supreme Court case, which will inevit inevitably will follow what we do here today, by the way, inevitably, in my, in my personal opinion, because this is what uh, people tend to do, and we'll be back working off the original Section 37 one, and not the amended one that we're trying to, to, to bring forward here today. And Senator Patrick has quite clearly said, um, you know, the... Uh, the, the mechanism we're trying to improve, trying to in, in, in insert here into the uh, into the bill, would make it almost impossible for any employer to suggest that anybody, by their very nature of who they are, is undermining anything. But while we still allow 90 plus percent of the infrastructure of the primary level schools in this country to remain in a religious ethos, we're going to be perpetuating inequality. That's just a fundamental reality of, of the situation we find ourselves in, and the Constitution backs that up. So we are always going to, until we come to a situation, I mean, people talk to me about Finland, I made this point yesterday, people talk to me about Finland and how wonderful the education system is in Finland, and how wonderful the literacy stats that come out of Finland are. Finland, one school district, one school, no primary, no secondary, no girls, no boys, one school, you should see the school's palaces. But that's their value system. That's what they believe in, and you meet anybody in Finland from the Finnish political system, and they'll say, regardless, left wing, right wing, centre right, centre left, far left, far right, all of them say, fundamentally, they'll say to a visiting deputation, and I was a member of one, what underpins our education system, they will say, is the word equality. That's what we all believe in. Fundamentally, it's equality. Ireland, patronage. The child is not at the centre of education system, and neither is the worker. It's ideology patronage, the rights of patrons to have their ethos. That is what's centrally at the core of our education system and also impacts on, on medical institutions as well. So 
while we are waiting for that revolution to take place, and I will be at the front of it, we have to deal with the constitutional reality of where we are. And unfortunately, because of the, constraint, the constitutional constraints in which we, we operate, uh, raising that bar is, is, uh, is the best we can do. But it's no mean achievement. I don't, I don't want to under, undermine, in my, I don't want anybody to think that my comments here today are undermining our achievement. This is no mean achievement, what we're doing here today. For people who are working um, in a school system or in a, in a medical uh, institution who feel uh, that they can't be themselves, I'm keenly aware of that. Um, and I've dealt with it myself. Um, but deletion, to be honest, Senator, while you know, I would love to be in a position to do that, deletion would lead to a successful, in my personal opinion and our legal opinion, would lead to uh, an open goal for those who want to do down this agenda. And we'll be back dealing inevitably and probably forever um, with the existing Section 37 until we radically overhaul uh, our education system, which EU directors will allow us to do. The EU directors, you are quite happy for us to, to constitute our education system any way we will. Um, but this is one we have. And this is one which, which I, I'm trying to, uh, to, to operate uh, within. Thank you, Minister. Senator Batchik. Uh, uh, and I just wanted to echo what uh, the Minister said, and I think he's very helpfully given us the, the context. And I, I spoke on this before at second stage. It's a, you know, and yes, I am an atheist, unlike Senator Norris. And yes, I think it's outrageous that we pray continue that we continue to. Do, what did you say? <laughs> I pray for us. <laughs> and like and I'm, always, I'm always grateful for your Death prayers, Senator, Senator. And many people have offered to pray for me on many occasions in the past. But, uh, <laughs> but the. Uh, on a, you know, but on a serious note, I mean, you know, of course, I think it's outrageous that any teacher should have to be of any particular religion, and of course, I think it's outrageous that 95% of our schools are are under religious patronage. And I'm, you know, I, as a parent, I fought, and indeed, um, was instrumental in the setting up of a new multi-denominational school for that very reason, just to try and ensure that we try and break the hold, the stranglehold that the churches, plural, but in particular the Catholic Church, have on our primary education system and indeed our secondary education system too. But so I'm the first to to. Uh, uh, agree to absolutely endorse what uh, Minister Reardon has said. A revolution is required. Unfortunately, it's extremely difficult to upset the status quo. And very, very many parents who are not themselves believers are in fact uh, uh, proponents and upholding status quo in faith schools to which their children are attending and for very good reason, they don't want to rock the boat for their own children. So I think there's a real, really big issue here that actually is the context in which this bill is being debated. And again, coming back to the point about, you know, about what we can do within our constitutional or EU confines, you know, it's very clear from uh, any reading of the, well, of the Human Rights and Equality Commission uh, report, for example, that provisions like this, like Section 37, are in fact in place in many EU countries, but it's just they don't have the significance they have in Ireland, because in most other EU countries, uh, the schooling system is not religious-based. It's state-based. It's a secular system. There's a very tiny minority of faith schools, and those faith schools are entitled legally to discriminate in a, on a sort of Section 37 model. And if you look at the Dutch, uh, the Dutch or Danish or British legislation, you'll see there's actually similar provisions there. It's just in our system, Section 37.1 has this immense significance for, so, for all of us because 95% of our schools are our faith schools. They are religious run schools under religious patronage and educate together form and multi-denominational schools form only a tiny minority. So that is the context. I wish it weren't like that, but I think you know one must be realistic. And we thought, let's put it this way, as the minister said, this is no mean achievement. It's 17 years since Section 37.1 was enacted. You know, It's 30 years this year since Eileen Flynn was sacked from the, uh, the Holy Faith School in New Ross. So, you know, it's not a mean achievement to overturn the, the potential for discrimination that still exists in our law, and that's what I think this bill will do.